this is the part that I didn't add on to the previous video for the Mazda Valleys and the Draculas, the ones of which I'm going to change to a different medium. So this is just my way of doing things and how I like them to be. Um, you, may, you may think differently. I've just sorted myself out today and have a window to show you these new Draculas. Um, I've got Dracula Gorgonella. Dracula Posadarum. A Mazda Valia Viciana and a Mazda Valia Coccinia Harveyanum. Because I haven't got Harveyanum. The other, there's one gone next door because I've already potted him. This is another one I did this morning. Dracula Venefica. Which is how I do my Draculas. I don't like them done in mixes like this. Draculas with no roots, and I can guarantee you there's no roots on these plants. Um, huge bark, moss at the top, completely wrong, and won't help them at all. Although that looks as though it may well have some roots inside. This one had no roots. The one I did this morning had no roots. So this one is ready to go and hang up next door. But I thought I'd show you what I do with the Draculas. I'm going to put the next one in a slightly bigger basket. This is what I tend to use with my Draculas. Can't buy them anymore, um, which is annoying. But I managed to get hold of about 10 from Peter White. He sold me the last of his stock and he's not getting any more in. Now what I do is I put moss in the bottom and a little bit up the side. Then I put a little tiny bit of um, charcoal in the middle of it all because obviously I want them to be happy in this mix for a good year and the charcoal helps the um, compost, the moss stay sweet it actually stops it going sour so I need to actually pop outside because what I haven't done is brought in some bits of charcoal and the charcoal I used this morning I tipped into the new Mazzy mix which I'm going to do so bear with me a sec hi guys back again got my charcoal got my moss it's quite long stranded the moss I'm going to use because my everyday moss I've run out of and I tend to keep this stuff for the um, neofinesias but unlike some I always pack it in here dry I don't pack it wet um, each to their own I just do it a slightly different way but these are quite longer bits so I'm just putting a little bit in the bottom and then all I'm going to do just tip a few bits in there, which will be down near the bottom. Now what we've got is this one with all this big bark. And I don't like this moss either. I don't know which moss this is. It's not as nice as mine. So I'm just going to tip this out into my recycling gardening bin, which goes out with the garden stuff every couple of weeks. And then we can see how rubbish these roots are and that's what you call rubbish um not a good root on there but it's fine um it's when you order over from ecuador and the plants travel over you'll find some with good roots some with bad roots it is not a problem to get draculas with these sort of roots what is a problem is if you live a Dracula with these sorts of roots in moss and bark, which is way too, I mean, the bark's way too big, and you're going to lose them because they've got nothing to give them any support. Whereas doing it this way, and now what I'm going to do, I'll just get hold of a little bit 
and I actually wrap it all around loosely the base of the plant like that then I'll sit it in there then I will um, put more moss in which will support it and hold it up not tight I don't want it tight I need these roots to get going through the summer because there's no way you're going to get anything on this plant. I don't want anything on this plant apart from roots this year. I don't even want it to think about flowering, so it will just be kept in the shade, out of the light, kept moist and... Um, Hung, maybe hung, maybe, I don't know. Sometimes I, I hang most of them. Um, sometimes I um, mount them. Um, sometimes I don't. It's all right mounting them so long as you can convince the moss. I haven't got any live moss, so... Um, but what I find happens is we end up with what Roger calls zombie moss because if you keep it soaked for long enough and I do with these, they're sprayed every single day and in the summer they are um, sprayed twice a day because of how I grow them when the mounts are there and they're happy but what happens then is we end up with our zombie moss our moss comes to life and starts growing and clinging to the mount, which is what I want. And you'd be surprised, you keep it that way, how many years it won't rot. So long as you keep it happy and keep it growing, it will carry on. I've got some that have got um, moss going all the way around, climbing up to the top of the bark, climbing over the edge of the bark, um, wrapping around the back of the bark. So it truly is a good way to do things. Now, what I'll do is soak this um, moss, not soak it, soak it, but um, wet it like I have this one here and uh, put the hanger on it and take it next door and put it in the cool house. But since I've had them um, they've been in the, in here in the intermediate house, but now as they've settled down and I've now given them their new bedding, shall we say, put the label in, where's the sprayer, and then I'll take them into the cool house when I finish. I'm not going to feed them, I'm not going to give them a boost of any sort. I'm just going to let them become acclimatised to the, the other house. So, if I could remember where I put the new hangers yesterday, that would be good, but I might have... Oh, I know where I put the new hangers. I left them in the... Um, I left them in the cool house, so I'll put that on the hanger. Now what we're going to do, I'm only going to do another one. I've got to do the other Dracula, but there's no need to do it on film because you've seen which way we go. I've got another Viciana, which is a very nice Viciana. which only cost me $12. And there's a new growth. That one was a broken leaf, what I need to see is how good the roots, or not, are in here. And they're not, but there's new ones coming. So the old roots have gone. Again, look at that. You've got all, all the dead spongy roots in the middle. Are we worried? No, because we've got new growth here. But I was gonna put this in, um, bark and moss, but 
but I'm actually, for the summer, spring and summer, I am just going to put it in, wrap it in moss and stand it in a temporary pot till the end of the summer so I can get some root growth on it. But I am going to use a terracotta pot because it will have a wicking effect on the um, water as I just soak the moss. And I don't want this plant unhappy because obviously Bichiana isn't a warm grower. It's cold. It's not just cool. This is cold. It hates the hot weather. So I don't want it to get go backwards. I just want these roots to grow. So I'm literally just I sit it in there like that nothing else because by the end of the summer I plan to take it out and hopefully with a good bit of root growth um, on there I can then put it in its permanent home for the winter which is I want it to be in one of these pots and it will still go back in this pot but it will go in um, a moss mix not a moss mix at all. I don't know what I'm talking about. My Mazda Valia mix, which is um, the larger portion is uh, Occhiata, fine bark. Although Vichiana, I'll probably put in medium bark because he's a big boy and there we go, and we've got holes there. But I just have to watch how I water that until the spring. Um, but what I am going to show you is coccinia. And I suspect there's two damaged leaves on here. And if I could see, there's my nice scissors. I'm just gonna cut the whole thing off. Because again, I'll be very surprised if this grows, because coccinias are waking up from now onwards. I've got one, one with, I showed it to you on a previous video, the coccinia xanthina, the yellow one. This is Harry Anum, and that is, a, I think it's a red. Oh, look at this. Look what we have here. It has got a flower spike. It's got two flower spikes. There's another one. But I think, I think that one's gone. I don't think that one's going to survive. That doesn't look as though it's got a top to it. We'll see. I'll leave it there for now. Not the right time to be doing this, but I don't mind if I sacrifice the flower spikes, to be fair. Um, because I want it to grow on. It's been starved of water at some point. But again, I only paid 12 euros for it, so... Uh, have you broken your top off? Maybe not. No, no I think you have. But I'll let, leave you. I'll leave you. Now, ah, look. Now you see we have a good root system there. We have a good root system there. So, what I'm actually going to do with this is again put it in a clay pot but I am not disturbing that root ball not at all am I disturbing that root ball with those flowers because it's a good there's good roots coming um, even if there are a couple of dead ones inside it really doesn't matter I've bought stuff off of this lady before and if I buy stuff left over that she's selling cheaper because she hasn't sold it, I take my chances with what I get. Now what I'm going to get is a little bit of... Let's have a piece of polystyrene in the bottom of there because I don't want to go in next door and get the hydro lacquer. 
don't want to put too much more moss in it. It's got a lot of moss and it is so wet as well. So I'm just going to put a tiny, tiny bit of moss at the bottom. Tiny, tiny bit of moss at the bottom. Then I'm going to stick that there like that. And then I am going to fill this moss in. Just push some down the side. Trying not to break the flower. But what I also need is a support to straighten that flower spike because it's a bit cockeyed. You get in there, mister. Sit. You get in there. I don't want to set this back now that I've seen the roots. They're really good and I want it to carry on growing. And knowing these coccineers as I do, it won't abort that flower. It might decide, actually, she doesn't know what she's talking about. I'm going to turn my toes up and she'll have to wait till next year. But, say la vie, say be it. I needed to do it. I needed to know what I had in that pot and now I do so all is good with the world but please tell me I have a flower spout oh, I do not quite tall enough for a coccinia but it will do for now and you're no good I need Somebody tell me where my pot is. My pot is there. Yes. Are there any tiny ones in there? Clips. Small clips, please. Yes, there's a tiny clip. There's a tiny clip. So, what we want is to carefully tear that off. The tissue. Come on. Go, go, go. Oh, scissors. Scissors. Oh, dear. Scissors, scissors. There. Tear that so it doesn't get in the way. Put that there. So that we can straighten the beauty up. In fact, you know what? I am going to put one, the bigger ones on, that will hold both that flower, that leaf, and that spike. Then, I'm going to put that on there, because I do not want any kinks in that spike. Now, what I also want is another one of those, because I'm not convinced, I don't think there is a head on this flower I think it has got broken so but just in case I'm actually going to stake it and clip it so if it's not broken it has the chance and it's going to grow on in there until it's flowered and then at the end of the summer, before we head into winter, I will um, take it out like the other one here, because that one's got no roots at all, Beechiana, but Coccinia has. And I'll take it out and I'll put it in ready to start the winter. It's not something I normally do, but to give them a better start, um, it's a good thing to do because of, I want good roots going into the winter and that, that, um, Beachiana especially needs putting into a proper mix for the winter so that it can carry on growing for the season, rest of what's left of the winter. And, um... Coccinia's got some dried leaves, but that's just where it hasn't been watered enough from wherever it came from. You're dead.
And here we go. Oh, marginally better. We have some. But the majority are... Let me put you out of the way, Mr. B. Coxinia, should I say. They're rubbish. They're rubbish. Rubbish, rubbish. They're rubbish. I don't use scissors with Mazzies. It's that's rubbish. That's rubbish. You can easily tell if you pull and the vellum comes off. You're not left with anything apart from the stringy bit. But Mazzies, you can see which are live. Usually, you don't want to pull everything off, but you want to pull off as much as you can. That's horrible. You're not good. You're not good. This is going to be another one that needs the roots wrapping. So yeah, he's not good, but I'll do him, finish him. But what we do have on him, if you can see, is a new growth. Only one. Not bad leaves there. A bit crinkly. Just needs a little bit of dehyd a bit of hydration. Get some good roots on. Get some decent compost in there and it'll be good to go you however I don't know what that bark is but it's horrible stuff it's probably pine bark because I don't like it not like myself and I very carefully came out here this afternoon with my plastic gloves to use on my pots because of my hands that keep going sore where are my plastic gloves? In my coat pocket. Have I used them? No. Am I on the last plant? Yes. So I'll put them under there for next time. So I've done it now and then I wonder why my hands are rubbish. Because they're always doing things they shouldn't. But yes, I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to do that on film. But what I didn't show you was Coccinia has got... Another new growth coming there, that one coming there. So there's two more leaves coming and possibly we will have more. That's one I cut off. Oh, oh no, nope. one, one, two, three. We've got another one there. What I need now is some cinnamon. Because those leaves are cut off. But what we do in this house is use a paintbrush. Keep a series of different size paintbrushes out here because they're very useful for little varmints that you can't get at and you don't want to dip the whole plant. So you just spray the end of your paintbrush with your killer or your, you can use methylated spirits or your rubbing alcohol, zap, 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 um, and get them. So that's what we do. But yes, this, this little beauty is going to get the same. It's going to get wrapped in moss around the bottom. It's going to get, we haven't come out with much roots left. That one's no good either. I don't think that one is either. Oh, yes, it is. He's all right. He's not. He's definitely not. So we need more roots on this beauty. Um, but this is quite a big grower, I think, as well. So he's going to need quite a big basket. But he's going to get this one. And I'll leave you there because then I can at last process a video this weekend. And hopefully those that were interested in the potting of the Mazzies will find it useful because we all do things in different ways that's not to say any of the things that anybody else does is wrong as people always say it is whatever is right for you um some of my draculas with the big long roots especially my chimera vampira grows big long roots and because they're big established plants they will happily grow so long as you kept them sprayed they will happily grow in the mixture of bark and moss and mine are doing so but it would be wrong completely to put 
Um, these into bark because they will die because they've got no roots and they need something for their roots i personally don't like trying to get roots on i want roots on them quicker and i personally don't like getting a plant to put roots on when it's in bark if they've already started and you've got the new growth then yes i will put them in bark with a mix of sphagnum but when you've got desiccated roots like I've got here, I will um, do it this way. But coccinia, good roots, and that should just romp away. So um, we will see, even if we only have one flower spike, we will see what that beautiful flower looks like before the end of the summer. So I'm very glad. But hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and um, I will see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.